Hello there. Now that's what I was talking about. The last episode of Angel Season 5, Episode 7, Lineage, was pretty much a banger. It was really good. Wesley stole the show. And now we move on to Episode 8, titled Destiny. Let's hope the show can continue the upwards trend and the momentum after last episode. Let's find out. It's your boy Ellie Moses, your 22-year-old law and film shooting heat from Sydney, Australia. Shooting your shot, baby. This is Angel Season 5. This is episode 8 titled Destiny. Let's waste no more time. Let's slay this reaction. Alright, looks like we're beginning with a flashback here. And whenever there tends to be flashbacks, tends to be good episodes. 1880. <laughs> Such a hungry little kitty. Okay. I, I totally forgot Drew and her mannerisms and the way she delivers her lines. Like, you know how we did the Buffy ranking and it's like, love to hate, was it? Or, yeah, love to hate. Or, I forgot the ranking of my own ranking system. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It is, that's Drew, alright? <laughs> that's Drew. Oh, sweet Winnie. Got you to feast on now. Hello. Bloody hell, runs you up. Oh, oh, okay. Look what I made. It's called William. William. What it's done for you, William. Dora and I had a little spot. You know, Darla. Master's pet. I've been with that too. Well, make up. Always do. After a little tit for tat. Shouldn't let that spoil our fun here. Nonsense. With another man. Does this tie into maybe the Spike Angel bromance? I think that makes me some kind of weird. People <laughs> talking about this season? Ah, I like this one. Those are my best of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Even I'm laughing a lot with them. I can tell away from the spike. Would that I could, you big ape. <laughs> well then, why don't you make us both happy and give me what I want? You're not getting an office. Son, the rest of your lot get to go home with the nights and cozies. Me, I got a nest in somebody else's roost. It's not bleeding right. Your heart gets broken. Don't annoy me. That's all. Job well done, eh? At least give me Wesley's office. I mean, since he's gone. He's not gone. He's on a leave of absence. Yeah, right. <laughs> Boo hoo. Uh, Try staking your mother when she's coming <laughs> on to you. <laughs> he references that wow. again. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wonder. She wasn't excited. You got mail. It's addressed to you, Care of Hair. If you don't mind. You know who Spike kind of reminds me of? Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was, yeah, it was written before. Um, if you guys have read the Harry Potter books, um, Peeves the Poltergeist, who just basically roams around Hogwarts, pops in and out every now and then, and just basically annoys everyone around the school and just runs amok, except... Spike so has sort of that similar role, but it's Spike, and I find him way into way more entertaining than Peeves the Poltergeist. And I can know, I understand why Peeves was left out of the movies, but yeah, Spike kind of reminds me of like he's playing that role at the moment, where Wolfram and Hart is the Hogwarts in this situation, and he's confined to that space or confined to LA. He's just roaming around, um, being a ghost. But Spike is hella more entertaining. Okay, we got hit with the flashbang. <laughs> Morning, ah! Any more fireworks for me? I'll be in here telling your boss. Fuck <laughs> 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 
Yo, yo, what, 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 what's happening? What's happening? This is about, oh, okay, okay. I'm keen, I'm keen. Is this on? I mean, how? I don't know. He just. I got it. Must be in that box of flashy I got in the mail. Oh, no, don't care. But if you find out, give him a bloody kiss on the mouth, will you? Harmony? <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> Mission denied. Oh my god! Oh my god! What? You think just because you're all. That's a very pretty skirt you're wearing. Yes, yes, yeah. Take an office, go. Hurry up, go. Just start hooking up. I'm waiting for it. There we go. Just hurry up. Taking a long lunch bus. There we go. L extended lunch break. There we go. It's, that's all it took. <laughs> <laughs> When he leapt up right in the middle of the ceremony, grabbed the priest's head and, and, and squeezed it until it popped. And I always talk about Angel and Dala running amok around Europe, but looks like Angel and William had their own little adventures. Bad boys, what you go up to? She brought me into this world. And I was meant to be. It's like. Sweet Roll credits. I mean, a bit dotty and brain out, but she's not. She just. She's like she's still got a bit of a child. Off two or three by now. Driver, stop the coach. <sighs> Be home before sunrise. We need your office. Get out. What? I have to take <laughs> orders from a gun. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> this is crazy. I just got thrown out of my own office. That ghost pal, Mr. Goodfang, I guess he's. Jerry? No! Oh. My place is the donor! Hey, 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 leave the toner alone. Phones, computers. Shut him down. Find out if we got some kind of bug in the system. Who put it there? That guy kind of has some ink in his eyes. Hence the toner. Angel. Oh, let me guess. Uh, lab computers are on the fritz. Oh, yeah, but that's just the tip of the fritz, Mark. The needles on our atmospheric gauges suddenly start spiking into red, totally blew out the instruments. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought at first, but I think it might be something else. Never seen it, is it? I wonder... I wonder if that thing in the mail was like an EMP um, device. I don't know if it was because, yeah, like they were talking about an electrical surge. And hence, that's why Spike is being corporeal again. Maybe it's some electrical disturbance with the particles or something like that. And yeah, hence all the phones and chaos are on roof of and heart. It's like the office can't catch a break. There's always something happening. There's always casualties. He drank all my blood. Harmony. She's off having a nooner with Blondie Bear, remember? I know what a new <laughs> I didn't know what that was. You said she's with Spike? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's corporeal again. Corporeal? Yeah, if he got something in the mail, flash, bam, boom, he's a solid citizen again. Oh, I'm sorry, we just, you know, we had our hands full dealing with the uh, glitch in the office system, which just so happens to coincide with Spike being back, and I can't believe I'm just getting that. Seems how our universe thrown into catastrophic turmoil. So you know what's going on? Only what I'm told, Counselor. Corporate seers alerted me to the situation. Upshot is, we've got trouble. With the capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for prophecy. Chanshu. Oh. Have you heard of it? Let's go. Oh, God. That again, yeah. <laughs> familiar, so? So, it talks about a champion. A vampire with a soul who will play a pivotal role in the apocalypse. By name. Hold on. You're saying because Spike's back, you think he's... I don't think anything. All I can tell you is his very existence is disrupting the order of things. All I can tell you 
entire community was forced by crime. Why is this happening now? He would hear's champion. Spike gave his life to save the world. That gives him the cred. But when he died and became a ghost, case closed. Okay. What does the act do? Bam. Who's the champion? Come on. Movie. Watch the accusatory stares. <laughs> I only know what you're told. Maybe Eve's being played too. Something worse and seriously dangerous. Spike. Hey, yo, chill her eyes as well. Does not spoil the movie. Woo! Damn, how many? Yo, we getting them 11 symptoms right here. A lot of people catching strays. Buffy catching strays. And so did Harmony, but she just caught a right book stray or left. Replace. Yes, sir. Any challenge, we have a code black. Affirmative, we are closing Pandora's box. Hey, sick, fearless <laughs> leader. Uh, if you don't mind, what do you say I, uh, I nurse this bump with an ice pack while I barricade myself in my office, huh? Your call. Hey, right, Lauren. The second she figures out what's causing this. You know what's causing all this? No, Eve, I don't. This is just the beginning. The fabric of reality is starting to unravel. I don't know what else I'm saying to you. Spike, I don't know what you're putting in the water coolers around here, but your secretary just started crying blood and tried to rip me a few new ones. <laughs> Harmony? Had to put a porch lights out. <laughs> For the best, sure you understand. Maybe that's our problem in a nutshell. Our problem? He's got this theory. Fact, Jack. There's only ever been one candidate for the vampire with the soul hero part in the big show. Two of you and the Wheel of Destiny starts to spin off its axis. That's why every woman and man's going mad. Hold on a bit. You're blaming this on us? No, she's blaming it on you. <laughs> this town might not be big enough for the both of you. Screw this devil's funhouse, Angel. And screw you for good measure. I think I'll take the new flesh and bones across the pond back to Europe. Spike, by town I mean this entire plane of existence. You might find this disequilibrium by leaving. You might even make it worse. Let's not make it worse. We don't want worse. Let's go to the White Room and see what the good cat had to say. <laughs> Cat's gone. Oh, gone? Uh, that the ain't. White Room too. Elevator just opened up into a howling abyss. You know what's worse? A howling abyss? Terrible sound. Cat's gone means the conduit's gone means we're alone in this. No contact with the senior partners. Cat's gone can be just making a play in the balance of the universe. I love the mystery of this episode. <laughs> Europe will still be there after we work this out. <laughs> Maybe. Probably. <laughs> How exactly are you going to work this out, boss man? in the galaxy or whatnot? You think you're just going to sew that back up? If there was just some way to determine which one of you the prophecy is really about, maybe... I just read the Shanshu prophecy, and I'm telling you, there was nothing in it. Hold on. You read the prophecy? A uh, load of rubbish, you said? Well, wow, you're that bloody interested in this. Maybe someone who's an expert on the Shanshu scriptures. Fine, but Leslie's not here. No, but his department is. Maybe somebody there can... Do what? I'm telling you, I read... The prophecy. <laughs> Just the position cut. You get a translation of the prophecy. It's like comparing the King James Bible with the original Aramaic. The Hebrew. <laughs> Much of the flavor, the subtlety of usage, the historical context has been stripped away. <laughs> I've never read a poor old book report on the subject. I'm just supposed to. <laughs> okay, Cirque. Point made. Listen, is there anything in the Shanshu that can help us with what's going on? Yeah. What's it say about me? Split in two, and each then will seek nourishment from the buried river. 
Please, Sir, the text. English. So, big spend a cup of perpetual torment. More metaphor. No, that's real. Perpetual torment? No, that's not going to taste very good. <laughs> the weight of worlds upon him, binding his limbs, grinding his bones to meal until he saves creation. And live again in mortal form. At that part, I know. Yeah, I bet you do. So Angel drinks from this cup. Our computers go back online, phones stop ringing, and people quit turning into homicidal maniacs? Angel says the safe is swayed. Who says it's about him at all? Oh, come on, Spike. You really think this is about you? Oh, why the bloody hell not? Just Good. because you... Boys, let's focus on the problem at hand. Could be. We don't want to be wrong about this. There is no wrong. The drinking of the cup is predestined. That can't be changed. Whoever drinks from it was meant to. The earth with flesh marked the <laughs> appearance of the cup. The columns. Columns. Guns like, how did the cup go from the Vatican to Navarre? <laughs> but yeah, um, loving the atmosphere and I love the general vibe of this episode and all the chaos that's happening and everyone trying to solve this prophecy. Everyone has no answers and that's what I love. No one has a straightforward answer. They're just trying to solve the mystery as it's going along. Um, it's sad that we don't have Wesley this episode um, so far. I know he's taken leave after the events of last episode, but I think he would have elevated this episode even more so far because, yeah, Wesley, he, he was on a hot streak last episode and he really killed it. And I wish, I wish, I wish he was in this episode just to elevate it a bit more. But it seems the main players in this episode are Spike and Angel. And you never know, the prophecy might not even be about Angel or Spike. There could be another spanner in the works thrown in right here with another vampire with a soul. You never know, but probably either Angel or Spike. But I'm just saying, um, with the trajectory of Season 5 and what you guys have said about Season 5, I don't know. I feel like we're in for a banger here and potentially a big revelation. Well, it sounds vaguely... And the desert will swallow cup and house whole. <laughs> opera. Opera. Well, Collins was an opera house in Death Valley. It's buried in an earthquake in the 38 mid headlines in Los Angeles. Angel, the air and the bath is getting warm. Angel, we got a seriously major crisis going on here. Might not be the best time to go running after some mystical cup. I really don't have much of a choice. If it's there, I'm just going to have to accept the prophecy's real and hope that it stops this madness. There's no point to throw bodies into right yet. Bike's already off. <laughs> Yo. Oh, what car did he take? Yellow. Took my plane. I like the mountain. Judge was nine tenths. Ought to know that better than law throats. But I didn't, did I? Well, there's nothing saving the world, and now I'm back for real. Wonder why that is. Oh, wait. Because I'm the one. Yeah. Spike, I don't have <laughs> What's that? I'm losing you. You're far you out. Oh, yeah, you're breaking up. Spike the ponds. <laughs> Just call him a nonce or ponds. <laughs> Here we make it this way. Fresh young thing from Santa Cruz who somehow winds up connected to the senior partners of Evil Incorporated. <laughs> I never said I was from Santa Cruz. Just went to school there. You're the guy that talks to the cat upstairs. Eight. I think that makes you a lot more connected to this place than I'll ever be. Hey, oh, okay. As far as the senior partners are concerned, I'm just a messenger. To the left, to the left. Yo, who speed that? Whoa, that was clutch. Don't be fingering the robots. There's no way Angel got there before Spike. There we go. <laughs> But our whistles with a drink of light, refreshing talk. Save the world, didn't I? Once. Talk to me after you've done it a couple more times. Done talking, mate. Got a prophecy needs fulfilling. Talk. Spike. Damn it. Oh, nice interchanging cut right there. 
of Spike wandering around the temple, um, and then him walking around the corner as well. It's a flashback in 1880, and what looks like Angel might be banging Darla here. I I know I heard moans. Drew, you a hoe? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> sure you do. After all, you are his destiny. <laughs> I'm guessing that's where their relationship went downhill. Drew might make an appearance here, you know? In the present. It's not going to be that straightforward, is it? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Come on, Spike. Hey, uh, Spike means Spike. It is what it is. Like, Spike, we don't have time for this. If you can make us dry, Sally, we're not gonna last that long. Your way. I feel like someone might intervene and stop them, unless it's just these two fighting for it. Oh yeah. Look you. are the big savior. Fighting for truth. And talk about it. <laughs> you still can't lay flesh on the cross without smelling like bacon, can you? I guess. Well, that's the thing. I am. You had a soul forced on you. As a curse. I earned mine. Make you suffer for all the horrible things you've done. Spike said his dream was ours. He was given in a dozen times over, but I kept fighting. Well, I guess you didn't. It's my destiny. <laughs> that word be was just to get into your girl's pants. Ooh. <laughs> That, that, that is a shots fired if I've ever seen one. Yo, we going full Matrix here with these two. Why are you asking all my questions, Fred? Okay, guns. Infected. You trust this bitch. She'll kill us all. Drank his ass. Really in there, huh? Huh? Just enough. Liar! We don't know that you're behind this. One that you were playing us. Where are you? Huh? Show me. What are you, a monster? Show me. That's one way to put him out. Yep. You a lot harder, Grants. Your head's just gotten thicker. <laughs> I'm not going to win this time. How do I make your choice? Your choice is going to be terrible. Bloody hot! A little more complicated than that. <laughs> oh, damn. They always were a bit simple. Don't touch her. A little late for that. I really don't like it when you raise your voice to me. William, don't play such a sad tune. Give us a kiss, will you? That is wrong on so many levels. You knew. You knew it was mine. Why? You knew bloody well! Just don't get it now, do you? Take what you want. Have what you want. 
Nothing is yours. Oh, yeah. uh, we'll see how that worked out. Really, William. Right. William. You know, you really should find a new name for yourself. It just doesn't strike the right note of terror. <laughs> I feel like, is there parallels here between Tell me more. the cup and Drusilla in terms of like taking what's mine and taking what's rightfully mine with Spike? You know, Angel can't accept the fact that Spike said Drusilla is his um, and that's why Angel said nothing is ever yours. And then the same thing, Angel can't accept the fact here that maybe the cup is destined for Spike and he's the one with the soul and he's the one that upset the balance and you know, turn the universe off its axis. Is that the parallel here between Drew and the cup itself or like their destiny? Um, or am I reading into it too much? Am I reading into it uh, the wrong way here? Um, is that what it's meant to be like? Where, and even Spike called out Angel, you were cursed with a soul. I have to fight and earn mine. And um, that's the trouble Angel has gone through this episode. Every time he's the Shanshu prophecy, he gets a little bit triggered um, because obviously... Uh, I think when it was first mentioned in season two or three, um, we were like, oh no, Angel is eventually going to, oh, not oh no, but like, oh damn, Angel is going to eventually going to, you know, uh, fight in the apocalypse and he's going to win over his um, humanity again. And yeah, he's going to be blessed with a normal mortal life. And um, as Eve said, this episode, your past is erased, your entire past is erased. Um, I don't think he has dealt with the fact yet that it could also be Spike. Angel is not special anymore. He's not the only one with the soul. Teach me what it means. Oh. Oh. You, well, you can't stand the bloody sight of me. <laughs> There's been a really good fight between these two. Now you look at me. You see all the dirty little things I've done. Because of you. You still have a sigh of me. But you made me a monster. I didn't make you sweat. I was on the floor. <laughs> Real you are. You never knew the real me. The only me. Praying. There was someone as disgusting as <laughs> you in this world. Don't you need me? Can't even see his reflection. <laughs> Take a long look, hero. I'm nothing like you. Wow. Oh, uh, here we go. Because you weren't me. <laughs> I guess that means she was thinking about you. All those times I was putting it to her. Hey, what about Riley, man? Shout out Riley. He put it to her. In the end, Buffy did really love Spike, but I just think it was too late. Remember? I think she really meant that I love you in the season finale. Let's finish this. This is the Anakin Skywalker vs. Obi-Wan Kenobi fight of Angel here. <laughs> I you don't have to pretend to care. I kind of feel bad for Eve. But I'm still sus. Oh, you all. That was sneaking here behind. You know, everything. It... He was under the effects. But, like, she could be another puppet of the senior partners. Like,. They're just probably telling her what she needs to know and they're hiding stuff from her as well. Or she could know the full detail and she's picking and choosing what to say. Or, like I said, Fred could be, um, not Fred, Eve could be really, um, I guess, blinded. Uh, or like, not blinded, um, she's unaware of what the senior partner's attentions really are and they're just telling her what they need her to know and she's just relaying that information on. And like I said, she's just a puppet. Eve.
Do we believe that delivery? I think we might del believe it. How's it feel? You tell me. Bam. Bike got the better of him there. That's a warning shot right there. I don't want to hear her bitch about it. <laughs> Curse. Oh, okay. My bad. So it burns you to ashes. Believe me. I think he's still going to drink it regardless. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Spike. Too late. Nothing? Oh. <laughs> Someone got there first, probably. Oh, okay. That, like I said, it seems like, it seems like, in my opinion, there's one individual or one entity or one group, could be the senior partners, that seems to be one step ahead. They knew about the Shanshu prophecy. They knew that where the temple was. They drank from the goblet, uh, the cup first or they took what was meant to be inside the cup and stored it away um it seems like there's one individual always ahead and maybe that was a ploy right there by those um behind this to eliminate either spike or angel from the fray um to narrow down the prophecy and uh i guess reduce these complications they've had hence the EMP um, situation or the flash situation where Spike became corporeal again. Okay, let's make him corporeal again. Let's increase the tension between him and Angel and let's make them fight to the death for this cup and let's eliminate one of them from the situation. Let's eliminate one of them from the equation. It seems like whoever's behind this is trying to get one of these out of the situation, um, in my opinion. And... Yeah, I'm not sure who's behind it still. I haven't deduced it. Um, it could be leading to, like I said, a big revelation. But that's what I'm trying to... That's what I'm sort of getting the gist of here. Whoever's behind this, or whoever got to the cup first, or whoever maybe put that decoy there, maybe it's it's a trick, um, is trying to eliminate Angel and Spike. It's, you know, trying to um, play with their emotions. And, you know, like I said trying to knock one of them out of the equation and it almost happened it almost did happen um but uh like we said one of both of them were still standing when spike drank the cup i think the possibility was or what whoever's behind this was hoping that whoever drank the cup first um there would have been only one left standing um at that point but no there was still two because they have a bit of sense in them <laughs> they didn't want to hear buffy bitch about it <laughs> I fell down <laughs> some stairs. Spike fell down the same set as well. Everything medical must come. Nothing stopping me. Still going on. I'm getting worse. What about the cup? Did you? Uh, it's okay. It shouldn't be so so. What? There we go. Well, I don't know. The circles don't make sense. There, maybe these. Gone. Stairs, huh? <laughs> Take the magic so what are we gonna do about it? I said we start by untying the <laughs> <laughs> So is the guy that read the prophecy that maybe set him up, Serg, is it? Oh. Partners don't know a thing about it. They're as angry as you. Really doubt that. <laughs> don't worry, Angel. Sir can't hide for long. We'll bring him in, find out who put him up to it. Well, there's two of you who should give him home a nice neck. Eve? 
have other things to worry about. The whole Shanju thing's still unresolved. Still two vampires with souls. <laughs> Guess that's a question for another day. Yeah, well. Meantime, the sold ex ghost vampire's got some corporeal drinking to catch up on. <laughs> what do you say, Charlie boy? Feel like getting pissed? No. No, man. My head feels like it's going to split open and toss my toys and candy all over the floor. <laughs> you like the god is good at no. me. Beat me to the cup. Where's my cup? So what? If you don't. <sighs> Doing this by the gun. <laughs> For the first time. <sighs> Spike was stronger. He wanted it more. Means you should hit the pads again and work on your technique. Not the one. I, I knew she was sus. I knew she was sus. I knew, bro. I knew it. I don't. I haven't even seen what's unfolding here, and I know. Fun as it sounds. On the plus side, we totally fell for the cup of torment thing. Now we see Kirk with all his vanishing act without a hitch. Wait, so she's against the senior partners as well? Team Angel is on red alert. Could be they think the partners just fired a warning shot across their bow. John was right. Oh, and by the way, believe the brother. Spike didn't kill Angel, but they did beat each other to bloody pulps. Oh. Wow. I was wondering when my guy was gonna show up again. <laughs> Oh damn! Oh damn! He is back. He is back. The man. I listen. La last time I saw him, uh I forgot his name. Let me try to remember his name. Lindsay. 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 Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking Casey for a second, but no, no. Lindsay. Lindsay. And um, yeah. Like, I, if there's one thing Joss Whedon is good at doing. Um, it's like characters you think are done and dusted in the show um, and brought back into the fray and made really important. We had that with Anya. And I don't mean done and dusted, but I mean like dead. I mean, that could possibly happen as well, being resurrected, aka Spike. Um, but um, in terms of like, you think their arcs are done, they've gone away and bang, they come back. Look at Lindsay. Um, he ended off, you know, having that amazing speech at the executives, leaving Wolfram and Hart and having that relationship um with angel at the end where he left in the red truck and you thought he was done that's it and i was actually i promise you guys probably don't believe me but i was actually thinking about him about two or three episodes ago i'm like you know what we haven't seen Lindsay, and he could possibly show up in season five and lo and behold there we are he showed up but a different man he's got the tats um i don't know if he still has the cyborg arm or cybernetic arm oh, i think he had the surgery on it um the operation where from memory it looks human so it's covered up like it's um but yeah he's all tatted up doing some ritualistic stuff the whole house is painted eve is sus a new freaking she was sus and it seems like as well she's a glitch in the system for the senior partners because um it seems like the senior partners and angel investigations are confused and she's just relaying false information after false information like nothing that can be said now when she's part of the gang or when she's in the office can be um trusted because Lindsay is the perfect individual for eve in this situation where obviously they have a close relationship um banged angel obviously they're under some spell but um 
sacrifices must be made. She clearly loves Linji that much, or they're in uh, tandem with one another where they don't care. They know the sacrifices they have to make. Um, Lindsay's the perfect individual to um, play Angel at this point because he's worked at Wolfram and Hart long enough. He knows the ins and outs. He knows how to see your partners think. He knows what the executives need to know. He knows what information um, has been said over time. So he knows what to tell Eve basically to tell angel the perfect information the breadcrumbs the tricks to play and how to act and yeah Lindsay would know the ins and outs of wolfram and Hart. whether he's behind the or um i don't know yet i guess we'll find out more whether he was behind those cybernetic robots the other episode we don't know i mean he's had time to gather them resources he's had time to i guess gather an army or whatever he has gathered um but it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out now and uh, clearly, as we saw this episode with Serg, I mean, playing everyone as well, another puppet of probably Eve and, uh, Lindsay, um, yeah, the thing was a fake, the, the cup was a fake, um, basically led them to a fight to the death almost, and maybe it was, um, that plan of Lindsay and Eve to possibly eliminate one of them from the equation, eliminate either Spike or Angel from the equation. Didn't go to plan, but still, havoc is caused in Wolfram and Heart. There's so much confusion. Everything is in disarray. Um, this episode, it would have been amazing to have Wesley. Now, Wesley, this season, oh man, he could be cold-hearted. He can be a cold-hearted killer. That's why I would love to have him on our side. Um, or have him back. He is on our side, but I'd love to have him back because... If there's ever a situation where he can suss out someone, he can suss out Eve. And I mean, Gunn had that this episode, obviously with whatever infection that was happening uh, with the crew um, or with the employees. But um, that was made to play as if everyone was going crazy and Eve was just a victim. Um, she played the victim card. But I'm very excited now to see where it goes on. And like I said, there was going to be one revelation this episode and we had it. We had the revelation and that was... The um Lindsay at the end with Eve and obviously Eve not being who she seemed she was obviously I freaking I, she had me she had me convinced but then I was like nah she still could kind of be sus and obviously the end of the episode she came into the apartment you know undressed Eve being freaking uh, Eve like she <laughs> right there um but yeah uh, a really great episode in my opinion I really really enjoyed that thought it was a banger one of the better episodes the fight between Angel and Spike was fantastic the tension between those the rivalry goes back to 1880 where Angel took his girl um and I love uh the commentary on like sort of possession and what's yours and you know Spike wanting it more wanting um to attain the prophecy or wanting to be that vampire that's spoken of in the prophecy and angel had to question himself for a bit because yeah spike did get the better of him um very character driven episode which i really really enjoyed and yeah a banger in my opinion and i cannot wait to see what happens next and yeah wesley was really missed this episode after that banger last episode uh, as well but he could have been utilized this episode because he could have picked out the situation with Cirque and um, I guess Lindsay and Eve capitalized with Wesley's absence right there. So I cannot wait to see what happens next. As always, guys, it's been your boy, Ellie Moses. I hope you enjoyed it as I did. Take care. God bless. Peace.